going live and then I have to like mute it immediately. Julie's probably on freaking out. <laughs> yeah. uh, my water tastes like lake water today. I don't Ooh. know. Kind of disgusting, but yet very summery at the same time. I miss New York water. I don't know. Today it tastes weird. I think maybe because of the heat mm-hmm. and like the water's gone nuts. It yeah. still says that it's setting up. What happens when I'm doing this? Could you see me okay? I see you fine in the screen. I can look on the website on Facebook. All right. I think it's going now. We already have it's setting up. up. What happens when I'm doing uh, this? Can I hate when I'm talking. Okay, okay, good. All right. Now it's working. See? Eventually we get it. All right, good. Now we're good. Yeah. We're set. Julie doesn't have to freak out anymore. Oh my gosh. I want to know everything that's happening. Okay, so for the record, I am Natalie Diaz. This is Chelsea. She is the mom. Are they two and a half months now? Three. They're three-month-old boys now? They're three months old already? Yeah. Oh, my God. Time flies when you're having fun. I know. Oh, so you just got back. Yes. A whirlwind adventure where you went to go visit family for a few weeks. For help home back to reality yes so your maternity leave is ending soon uh july 10th july 10th so we still have a minute Mm -hmm. your new nanny started yes all right i want to know where you found her how this is going what rules and regulations you gave her but before that how was traveling in the car with the boys um it's really they're i'm really blessed they're wonderful um they both sleep we we are on a very tight, we are on a very strict schedule. So if you're a new person who's like planning to be in this world, I strongly suggest a schedule and I strongly suggest pushing through. Um, I thank everybody for the advice last time to keep with the number two nipples because it did really make a difference. And we're down to half hour feeds. Wow. Um, Something else that I, I did call a sleep consultant, even though they're great sleepers, which we can talk about in a second. But, um, they advise me to, if they don't eat within like the half hour or the 40, like if they are not, just cut them off at 45, then cut them off at 40, then cut them off at 35, then cut them off at 30. Okay. So we did that. And now we have like a lot of more time in our life back. Oh. Um, so that's good. So the boys did great in the car. So we timed it that we would stop on the way at my at, at family. And then we, um, So we broke up the trip from DC to New York basically and fed halfway through. So the boys could stretch We had an hour break and they did a great job. All right. So your hour break, you stopped at a rest stop and stayed in the car. No, I did that on the way down. That was a mistake. This time we stopped at my grandparents. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yes. That's some place to stop. But when you did stop at the rest stop, what was like the big fouls that happened or what could you have done because not everybody can stop at your grandparents house so if you were taking a road trip let's say next time and you were driving for even a longer period of time what would you do differently um I would plan to stop at the rest stop instead of us being like should we do it should we not do it should we do it should we not do it um so I would plan for that I would leave room in the car for changing I think if they're under if they're under a year I don't know I get skeezed out in rest stops even myself Um, and then I also, as a learning lesson, bought those like chucks that you use in the hospital to put down on addition to the diaper, um, changing mat that I have. Um, and I would just be mentally prepared and I would really take it with a grain of salt with your spouse. My husband and I, instead of being shockingly, instead of being full of anxiety and like, "Ah," we just were like, this is hysterical. One of us, he was, it was raining on the way down, he was holding two ba- uh, two dogs and a baby and it was raining and I was doing the changing and having a spare clothes and I would dress up your babies and zip up things that are easy to come off really quickly. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. So you learned a few lessons. Yes, we did. Oh. It, learning on the job. That's the way that it goes. I think that's how most people do it. You could be as prepared as you want, but yeah, you don't really know until you do it. Yeah. The dogs though is fun. Throwing yes. in your two pups in addition to the two boys is definitely a whirlwind adventure. Oh my God, but I'm so happy you're home. Thank you. Yeah, I am too. Uh, I have about three weeks here and I think we're taking another road trip and then back to work. 
Okay. And then how were they sleeping in there? You had what kind of sleep situation? What setup was it? I did use two pack and plays. I know I was looking at getting mini cribs, but fine. why are you making, I don't know. I feel, I thought I just felt bad, but we used two different pack and plays. They worked really nicely. Um, we, my parents' basement, they set up for us. They brought us down a bed, which was really okay. nice. And they have a sink down there. So we were able and a couch and TV. So we were able to like, just kind of a really big studio apartment. Yeah. Um, but I would say it was really helpful with sleep training because it was really dark. Yes. Um, so got them used to sleeping in the darkness. Yeah. So I just ordered blackout curtains, but <laughs> good. It, yeah, it helped me. Bedroom's bright, which yeah. is nice, but you have those shades on, but it's still a lot of, a lot of light comes in. Yeah. So I just ordered blackout curtains. Oh, perfect. Did you get like fancy ones or just like the paper ones? Amazon, whatever can get here on Wednesday. <laughs> All right, that was it. You were like, that's my requirement. Oh, yes. And you have the target right there too. You could have always. I know, that. I know, but whatever. Oh, uh, well, but that's good. Listen, that was a fantastic way to do things. Cause now if they're sleeping, are they sleeping mostly through the night? My boys sleep from nine o'clock to 8 a.m. No, I, I want to sleep from nine o'clock to 8 a.m. <laughs> Me too. Oh. I, I have to put out there the Susie Giardino, the complete sleep solution book, 12 hours by 12 weeks. I lived by everything she said in that book and um, it worked. So oh, thank God. Yes. Is yeah. cool. That's so fantastic. I'm much better than I was last month. <laughs> I feel You're much better. Really you were in pretty good shape. You've been tough. in pretty good shape. Yeah. I think because everything started off so rough. Yeah. It just got easier after that. Yeah. So, and guys, for you, if you're watching, we certainly can't go through the, the wild goose chase that <laughs> Chelsea's been on, but they're all there. So you could just watch our, our past episodes because she's definitely had quite a journey. <laughs> and now this new, like the next big phase, right? So the next big phase of going back to work and having a nanny. So where did you find this person? So I'm really blessed. Um, we were walking the boys one day and she came up to me because her job, her kids were going to school and camp. So she approached me, we jived, I didn't interview anybody else. Good. I didn't think it was worth the time. She was great. Right. Everything checked out, references, all that. And she's doing a wonderful job she right did, now. But she me. was a nanny before. Oh yes, many jobs. And she, her, her job that she was with, the kids were going to camp. So it was the, it was the kids she was watching, not her own children. Yes, that sorry, yes. Uh, well, that's it. they kind of are her kids, right? Yes, so now, and now she has mine. Yes. Now she's there. So what are her hours looking like? Like when she uh, gets in the morning? Eight to six. Eight to six. Monday to Friday. Plenty. That's a, that's a long day, but how is it going to work with your work schedule? Yeah. I mean, we wanted to do eight to five or nine to five, but realistically commuting that if we did till five o'clock, one of us would have to leave at four, four thirty yeah. every day. And that's just not practical always. Yeah. Um, so it is a long day, but they're pretty, they're not like crazy rascals right now. So it's kind of a calm day, I think. All right. And so what's their schedule like? Like what happens? You wake up in the morning and how does it go? I wake them up at around 7 45, 8. I come in and I do like a good morning, good morning, repeat like a little. I try to have it be a similar thing every morning. And then they eat from 8 to 8 30. Um, they're napping a lot more, but we're starting nap training this week okay. as per the book. Um, and so we do a little bit of, I try to keep them awake a little bit after eating and then nap. They generally nap until 1130 and I can kind of play with them until 12, which is the next okay. feed. Very good. 12 to 1230, okay. same thing to four and then four to four thirty, And then I try as hard as I can to keep them awake from four to seven okay. 30 when we start our night routine so that they go right down at, um, after the eight o'clock feed. Okay. What is your night routine like? Um, I just try to give them a little infant. If it's not bath night, I do a little massage. I put them in a, um, I, I used to put them in a gown, but now I put them in a zip up onesie cause I'm not changing them overnight okay. and the gown, like just putting it over their head kind of alerts them. I like to be chill. Yeah. And then um, I love and live for the love to dream sleep sacks. And we're now on stage two. Very good. Those things are the best thing. And all of my friends, I'm like, get your 
uh, get your S together and get these because they're the best. They learn that they can startle a little bit, but it transitions them so much better than a swaddle. I you just, know, so wait, are you at the 50, 50 or just the next size? I'm at the 50, 50. Oh, that's so cool. That's yeah. so cool. And you know, they go well through toddlerhood like, I, in those for a long time. I just love that product. I love it. I actually, our washing machine broke when we came home last night. Oh. So we had to do one of, not, we had to do one of my sons is too small, too big for the small one. Okay. So he's like, the other one can do either, but one of my sons is just too big. So we put him in a different one and we were like, ah, how's this night going to go? It went okay. He woke up at 545, but he usually sleeps until eight, like okay. hands down. And I knew it was because I saw the monitor. I knew it was because he was startling himself oh. a little bit and his oh. hands were out for the first time ever. So of course it was going to be a little bit interesting. Oh my so, goodness. I That's so things. cool. That's so, are you doing a dream feed? Nope. You're not doing it. That's it. They're, they're down and they're down for the count. <sighs> You're so lucky, Chelsea. I hate I you. Know. I know. Eight ounces, eight ounce, eight ounces, oh each all four four feeds, and that's it. Ago, they were drinking a half ounce. I know, <laughs> I know. It's crazy. Oh my god! Yeah, they are oh. packing down the food. So, are you doing? Are you taking a ton of pictures every day? Do you have like what's your plan for like you know charting milestones or like journaling? I know you roll your eyes at me, but are you <laughs> I'm, I'm so I'm so bad. No, no I'm rolling my eyes at myself because like I just haven't really done that. And I do feel kind of guilty, but you know, I'm trying to just do what I can to Giant note. I set you up for that one because nobody really does it. Yeah. It's kind of... Did you get the little stickers that say like, I'm one month, I'm two months. So I was going to, but then I think I saw through someone you follow or something, um, a blanket and I asked who made it. And it was swanky press. And I got a blanket that they both lay on. It says their names. And then I circle what month they're in. And I also, I had them custom make it to add years because the twin one didn't have years. And I thought it would be really funny if at 12 years old, they were holding that oh my blanket. God. I really wanted that to be like super goofy, but the blanket's that. really cool. And you can use a photo editor and circle the month or you can, I was using Raffia. So Swanky Press, they make a twin blanket. Okay. Um, nobody else I could find did. Julia will link to it now in the side. So now I know she's scrambling to try to, to find it, but um, that's cool that you found that. So that's great. Yeah. Are you like doing anything for your family? Like, do you, are you like creating photo books or like any special plans for father's day? Um, so for mother's day, I did print out photos for the moms and my mom actually did something really cute and printed out photos and had them be the cards for all the grandparents, like the great grandparents, yes. the card was a picture of the boys. Um, she also got me, which was really cute. A Yankee candle with a picture of the boys on it. it said my oh. first mother's day, you can <laughs> customize them now online. So okay. throwing that out there was very cute. Okay. Um, father's day. My husband is traveling to Cannes, France for, oh, so sorry. I know for I'm the so advertising sorry. awards. Um, so he is going to be enjoying father's day a different way. Um, but so we're just going to be chilling basically. And I got him a cool gift that I don't think he's watching. So I, no, I know, but you'll tell us, I'll tell you time. next time. Yeah. I don't want to ruin it either. I will say he got me a great mother's day gift. I probably can't see it, but it's a necklace and it has their initials and, but it's like, it's kind of asymmetrical in the way the initials are. You can't see it, but no, we can't see it. Oh yes, we can. So if, that's, yeah. That like there's the I initials. Oh yeah. It's Aww. cute. And they like are placed in a different spot, which I kind of like. It's Maya Brenna or something. Brenna. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. There's so much coming up. I know. Holy moly. So now, okay. So now you have your nanny and now you're on a militant schedule, which I love, admire, and respect uh, wholeheartedly just because I'm, I'm happy that you knew to do that which is, a, it's, it's a huge, that's a huge milestone in itself, really for you more than the kitties, because the kitties will just do whatever. You took your first big trip, but now going back to work, what's the transition going to be like when you go back to work? Yeah, well, so what I decided for these three weeks before I go back to work is I am um, 
working on seeing a nutritionist, which I don't know for all those of you out there, check with your insurance because I just found out mine gives me 24 free sessions. Okay. So I really wanted to be dedicated to getting back to feeling healthy myself okay. um, postpartum. Okay. And working out every single day is like a goal of mine, but we'll see what happens. Okay. And um, so that's what I want to do these next three weeks. Going back to work, mm-hmm. my transition is um, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm pretty much like best friends with my boss. So she's been keeping me updated on things and uh, I'm not that nervous about it. I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll, let's report back on that once I do go back. Cause I'm not, I need to get through these next three weeks of like, this is my time. And then I'll see. Yes. So that's good. So now you, so did you go to the nutritionist yet? She's coming tomorrow for the first time. Look at this dog. My dog's like, I don't know if anybody minds. <laughs> Chew on Got my an itch. Got Betty an Lou. Itch. Betty. <laughs> Come on, girl. Come yeah. on. She can't help it. <laughs> she can't. But why is she laying right there? And that's crazy. <laughs> She's too big for her own good. So you've got tiny dogs, which is nice. Well, they're not super tiny. They're like dog size. Medium. A hundred pounds. Of no. Dog, She's broken too, my dog. She tore her ACL. <gasps> oh no. How does that happen? It just happens. I don't know, but apparently it's not that uncommon in giant dogs, but like she can't step on it that much and she's limping and she'll eventually need surgery, but that's oh. not happening right now. I really was like trying to like, let's see if we could heal it with food. And so yeah. I don't think that's true. Apparently they, the doctor said it's like paper. Once it rips, even if you put tape on it, the rip's still there. So Poor puppy. Whatever. whatever. Now, speaking of dogs, what did you, what did you do with your dogs? Like, how did you get the dogs used to the boys? Um, they just kind of jive with them. They come up and give them kisses every now and then. Um, I think actually my biggest fear is that I have a very docile dog, but now that I have the baby, she's very protective. Okay. Um, of the babies or of you, the babies, when you're with the babies? Of the babies. Um, she went, I mean, people that have been over our house before now come in the babies and they go towards the direction and she gets a little bit defensive. So we're trying to work on that behavior. All it's right. Very scary. Cause she was just, and I know she has good intentions, but. Didn't right. we talk about this in class? I in the book, yeah, it, it happens. People don't realize that that's going to happen. Everybody's so concerned about the dogs being aggressive to the kids that they, people don't realize. And guys, if, the, for, if you're out there and you're watching, I'd love to know your two cents on this, but we've had a lot of stories where the dogs became overprotective of the babies and they wouldn't let people near them, including the parents. Oh, Yes. No. Oh my god. Isn't that crazy? Like the, the dogs like these are my babies. I will that be taking crazy. care of them from now on. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's it's funny because people prepare and they're like, Oh, introducing your dog to the babies. It's not always the case. Sometimes the the part that you have to worry about is the freaking dog like not letting you. Right. You know, I don't think that's going to happen to your dogs. Your no. dogs definitely are like your dogs. But I think if you get a dog at the same time as babies, let's say, or maybe within a year of having the babies, it could happen that the dog's like, no, thank you. These are my babies. Interesting. Crazy. Dogs are wacky. They're super wacky. All right. <laughs> what else is on our list that we have to take care of before we go back to work? Like, is there any milestone that you would like to hit before you go back to work full time? I am going to sound crazy, but I just like need to figure out what to wear because you're so in between this, like, yeah, you don't fit in your maternity clothes and you don't fit in your old clothes. I know this is like so crazy, but I really just don't know what I'm going to wear to work, which is why I'm really trying to be regimen. Um, and you know, the other thing I was going to ask the community, if, it's kind of off topic, but I'm just starting to have postpartum hair loss and it's okay. really upsetting. Okay. Time out. Before you ask the community, let me tell yeah. you the scoop on this. I know the <laughs> biological scoop on this. So is it, are the boys starting to smile? Yes. Okay. So there are different cultures that have different theories. And then there's of course, scientific proof. So a lot of countries, for example, in the Philippines, they say like there's a saying in Filipino that when your baby smiles, you lose your hair. Hmm. 
And so that's the fact, because it just coincidentally happens at the time where you're kind of getting regulated hormonally again. So you're not losing hair. You're losing all the extra hair. Right. So you lose a hundred hairs a day, every single day on a regular day. When you're pregnant, you don't lose a hundred hairs. So that's why your hair is thicker. I can't believe this dog. She's distracting me. Ridiculous. Me too. She's so cute. <laughs> She's having a party. <laughs> so you lose, you don't lose the hundred hairs a day. So eventually when your baby smile and your body starts to regulate again, let's say you only lost 20 or 50 hairs a day. So you have 50 hairs a day times the eight months, nine months that you were pregnant. That's what you're losing. It just sucks to go back to normal. Your nails are going to change too. I know I can't. I'm so scared for my nails to go back to the way they were. It's been so go back, but you could do things like speak to the nutritionist and say, yeah. hey, is there any way that I could, because nail health, I think is actually easier than losing your hair. I think it's one of those things that there's different vitamins that you could take that could make that kind of level off, but that's what it is. It's not, there's nothing anybody could do to help you because you're going back to normal. It's so scary. Oh, I it's know. Like it's so like, traumatizing. Like, oh, Jesus. I, I remember like it was yesterday. Like I would be like this and then I'd like, no, the, the water wouldn't go down. Yeah. Handfuls of hair and you have thick <laughs> hair. No, I have such thin hair. You have thick hair. I have such thin hair. I'm like, I was one of my thousand strands gone. <laughs> gone forever. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> really, Chelsea? <laughs> the last time it was my baby freaking out on the call. She does this one sometimes if I if it's quiet, she sleeps. Mm. And if she feels like somebody's in the house and they're not paying attention to her, then she's like, excuse me. I'm here. Please pet me. Yes, we know you exist, Betty Lou. We all love you. Everybody loves you. But can I talk to Chelsea, please? I like her a lot. I live with you. <laughs> nope. She says no, nope, Chelsea. Okay, then come here. Come here and I'll pet you. All right, good. We'll do two things at once. So I'm curious to see what the nutritionist is going to say yeah. about that. So when is she coming again? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So I'll let you know. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want you to ask her, like that I want you to ask her on your half. I'll take any, if anybody else has any questions in the comments, I'll take them. All right. But, we do have a question. Yeah. Um, I mean, on that or any, on anything, but yeah. Peanut Gallery says, Stephanie, Stephanie's our new friend from Scotland. Cool. And she said she's doing an international move. She's moving back to the States on August 3rd for about August 3rd, about two and a half months before the twins are due. <gasps> Crazy. I'm a first time mom. So everything is new. Not sure if this question is relevant for this. Yeah, of course we answer everything, right? Chelsea, me and you, we take on everything, but did your baby start in a cradle and work to cribs or did they start out in your room or did they wake up and go to their room for feedings? So what did you guys do? Okay. This is the best question ever. Cause I literally obsessed over this for like months. Um, okay. So when I had help, the first nights when I had help, I had them sleep in their cribs because the help, my help was like right outside of the door. That yeah. was only like three or four nights. Then they slept so well in the crib that I, because I'm in a two bedroom apartment, slept on like the couch near their bedroom nursery when they were in the crib. That was not sustainable. So then I got a pack and play into my bedroom and put them both in that and then decided I didn't like them both in it because it made me nervous to, if somebody, I don't know, for extra, like for smothering purposes, it's totally ridiculous. They weren't moving at all. Then I got a Graco pack and play with the twin one with the two separators. Yes. Um, I didn't really like that <laughs> to be honest. So what I ended up happening was the timing worked out that that was right when we moved to Maryland. So my recommendation is if you can fit it, I mean, my husband would ha almost hated me for this, but two separate pack and plays to have them in the room next to you because one, that's what the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends. That's what my doctor recommended. And then three is I believe that that was the reason I got them to sleep through the night because I never got, let them get to the point of crying in hysterics. Okay. Once they cry in hysterics, they are much harder to put down. So I wouldn't hear them if they were crying in hysterics in their nursery. So I heard them cry a little bit, was able to intervene, night feed, go right. If he ever got to a level of hysteria. 
hysteria. And I truly believe that that was a, a major reason that they have learned to sleep through the night. All right. That's perfect. So they slept in two. Ideally, you would recommend that people get two pack and plays and put them separately in pack and plays, but in your room so that you could respond as quick as possible to not make anybody cry. And then just to go back to sleep before all hell breaks loose. Yes. Now I know some sleep people say, um, because you, you are supposed to kind of let them get through their sleep cycle, but in that first, in that month, one to month two, when they need to feed, they're going to cry. They're going to scream that they need to, to feed. And if you can get them right before that, they scream and cry. Um, you know, that's a good intervention. Now we were lucky because we had the space for two pack and plays. You have to do what works for you. Um, but that was what, what worked for us. I, and I was really terrified of SIDS and having both of them in the same root bed and I, I couldn't sleep. So all right. So with that being said, that's definitely one way to handle this. But if you, a lot of people don't have the room for the two pack and place. So you have to do what works best for you and your family. So now even like, I know that the American board of pediatrics says that two cribs are it, but you know, we're the only country that says that. Yeah. So for yeah. other countries that have been having twins equally as long as us, and I bet you too, by the way, that they will change it back. So I have a hunch that since 2009, I have watched the regulations change on sleeping two times since 2009. I'm sure that they'll change it again. But having them in your room is definitely an option. You could also, since you don't like the Graco, because not a lot of people like the Graco, that's not unheard of. Look at the, the Juvie Room Squared. Yeah, It's bigger, but they, there's a middle piece that could be unzipped to create one giant platform. And it is going to be big enough for you and your 20s. So that's something that you uh, might want to consider, but you know, everybody's different because if you have full-time help, you're going to want the babies to sleep with the full-time help because you have to remember that you're healing from surgery potentially. And yeah. you have to put your oxygen mask on first, make sure that you're eating good and sleeping good. So just do your best. But there is like, I know Stephanie, that that's Stephanie's the one that asked the question. I know that that's a, a big question, but it's not a bad idea to have at least a pack and play so that if the cribs didn't work out or you didn't like the cribs or you didn't want them sleeping together, you could always have one in a crib and one in a pack and play. So you have two different sleeping yeah. situations. So there, there is a lot, but Jewel, I, Jewel, could you do me a favor? Jewel, just link some articles that we have on, um, on sleeping. So for Stephanie, that's out there asking questions that is, uh, she could get some more information now. And now we have another question. So Colleen asks, since we're on postpartum topic, because before we were talking about your hair loss, are you taking prenatal vitamins still, or did you switch to your regular vitamins? I stopped and I'm starting now again, because I was like, ah. so I was like, I got to get back on the prenatal and then I need to take biotin. I know okay. that. I just need to, I like was, I was so regimented about my prenatal vitamins and then I stopped and now I need to get back into it. And I, I used to use a, uh pill thing like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday tells yes. you what, yes, yeah, so I need to do that again. Cause that's how the only way I remember. Why did you stop taking your vitamins? I don't know. I like one of those things where you're self-destructive for no reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, the babies came first and you're like, yeah. Oh, they take, are they taking vitamins or are they taking anything? Um, nope. They're just on formula. And tabulosity. That is so great. You're doing really, really good. Thank you. I do have a question for the audience. If anybody wants to, they, they have it go. Um, I am living in fear of the four month sleep regression, because I feel like we're doing so well. Yeah. Um, I even talked to the sleep coach about it. And she said, if I do the naps, right, I will still, I will be okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm just really scared of it. Is, is it, is it a real thing? Is it going to happen to me? What's going to happen? Am I, not, am I going to go to my, who are you talking be to for sleep? Um, I'm talking to the team at baby coach, which are the people who wrote the book. Yes. The, um, I can't pronounce her last name, but I don't know if you know who I'm talking about. I can Does it start with an R. It starts with a G. Um, Susie. Uh, we we linked the, the book in the thing. So if anything, I'll go back to that. Perfect. But it's it like is a real thing. The babycoach.com. What? It is a real thing. There's, we, we actually, what's funny is I was just talking to somebody about this. So Kim West is the one that I was talking to about the four month sleep regression. And there's not much, like, yes, there's things that you could do to make it better, but it's going to happen. And you just got to ride the wave. And I think the, the benefit of, 
doing the way the doing it the way that you're doing it is that you're giving yourself the skills so when it does happen you know just to get right back on the horse and a lot of people don't even know that there is something that that is coincidentally it's the four month sleep regression and it happens again too there's another round of it later on down the line but this is kind of the first one and it goes along with um growth spurts and uh emotional and mental development it's it's just one of those things that happens in order for your kitties to get bigger but if any of you out there have tips that how you dealt with the four month sleep regression, we would love to know what your two cents are because I am fascinated to know what other people did. But Kim typically says that you just have to stick to your schedule and just be consistent. And as long as you're consistent and that you give them some kind of continuity of the day, which is why we were talking about um, like your, your sleep massage at night or your bath time at night, so you just keep doing it. But you prepare, you batten down the hatches a tiny bit for the storm. But it will, it ends. It's not like something happens at four months and then it never goes back to normal. It really goes back to normal pretty quickly. And it's funny, Julie just linked you some articles already on sleep regression because, you know, it's Julie and she's uh, the wizard behind the curtain at Oz, which is fantastic. Well, I'm really excited for you to go back to work selfishly. <laughs> because then our next feed, live feed, we could do together. We can. Yes, absolutely. Yes. We will. We will. Uh, I like that. We'll go I have outside. one other crazy question if you want. What's the matter? I have one other crazy question. You, there's it's no really such thing crazy. as a crazy question. Oh, I hope it's super crazy. It is. Okay, okay, go. So in one sleep group I'm in, somebody asked about teething and somebody said that before your baby starts teething, you should put an egg in the room. Have you heard this before? I haven't, but I would put the egg in the room because I am very superstitious. <laughs> So that is, hence my Filipino advice on hair loss. I'm a big fan of superstition, not saying that it's not true or it is true, but why has anybody put an egg into their baby's room? And what so, would they say? So I went in a click hole, like for two hours investigating this egg in the room. And it's like, it. It's like when you discover a strange Amazon product, like everybody yes. loves it, you know, and all the reviews are great. Like, How did I not know? Right. And I asked the pediatrician and she literally looked at me like I had two heads. But apparently there might be something in the chemical of the egg and the pressure of the teeth coming in. Wait a second. Time out. Where are you, where are you putting this egg? Okay. So there are two different theories. Okay, uh, apparently well, this is also a Southern, um, a very, in, ingrained in Southern culture. I in America. It. Nobody's heard of that, by okay. the way. Oh, yes, Alex did. We have one, Alex. Alex, okay. tell us more. So go on, my Southern Belle. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I, I just saw this on the Now, officially, <laughs> you're speaking on behalf of all Southerners everywhere. Go on. I don't want to do that, but I'm scared of that. Um, but you put the egg either in a sock, in a drawer, mm -hmm. or hang it in their closet, or put it in their closet. Okay. Um, and you actually just leave the egg there to go, it evaporates apparently. Everything in the egg apparently evaporates. I don't okay. think that's true. That is what I've read. That at Gotta the end do of, it now. I know. Have to do it. I know. But at the end of teething, there's nothing in the egg. I mean, in Australia, they, they don't put their eggs in the refrigerator. So I'm assuming that it's probably fine for it to be out. But I have to Google this. But yeah, apparently there is maybe something that helps. I'm sure it's a superstition, but then I saw that there might be scientific fact. Stop the presses. Right and they now. said their baby's mouth did not hurt when they used an egg. But the egg is just in the room. I know. I don't know. It makes oh no sense. Oh, my God. Egg in room. You know I'm writing a whole article on this now. <laughs> I'm, I Literally. makes no sense. If you to post it, that means it's serious business. It's good not only go on and post it, but right where I can see it in front of my eyes. <laughs> now I have to do this. Now I have to give everybody an egg that, that comes to yes. class. This is now a must. I've never heard. I'm fascinated by that, but we did weird things too. Like, I don't even want to tell people the crazy things. And they weren't really that crazy. Um, like my mom has my family. I know it's, it's mostly Italians, but like when the, before the babies came home, there has to be a red ribbon that's tied underneath their crib. So it has to be like in this bow and it's supposed to keep like evil spirits away and stuff. But now, hey, listen, not for nothing. I had so many evil spirits during my pregnancy that I'm like, how many bows? How many <laughs> possibly 
type on, you know, put tie on this, but it ha- my mom like went in search of like this particular red for this ribbon. So I, there's funny. so many superstitions. That's one of them. There's also like when we, when I was a little girl, my mom would take us to church and there was this, this is crazy to anybody who's not Catholic. And it is crazy to every Catholic as well. They bless your throat. And what they do is I'm almost going to like reenact this for you. So the priest stands there with two candles, right? This is totally off topic of parenting, but it's fun because my parents did it. And then um, they like cross these candles and then you go up to the priest and like he says this prayer by putting the candles on your throat. Is this not like the weirdest thing? So truthfully, because I had candles on my throat, that means that you need to hang that egg. Yes. (laughs) That's the moral of the I have to do two eggs. I'm going to do two. You have to do two eggs. Are you going to put them one in the drawer and one in the closet since you can't now? Maybe, but then I won't know which one worked. So I don't know. Maybe I'm going to do both. No, you have to do both. How would we, the benefit is, is do both. Do Do both. both. Okay. Okay. What if if the closet didn't work and the drawer works? I know. This is when I lose all credibility as a parenting expert. When I'm like, everybody needs to put eggs in your room. I literally, in in this sleep training group, it was like, you know, do this. Colleen Colleen says that we should put red bows on the eggs. There we go. I think that we combine. It's a family Mm -hmm. thing. We take my family's traditions and your, but then I'll come over, go. I'll bless the baby's throats with tiny pens that are, I've stolen from random companies. I'll do that. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. Oh, that is great. I love things like that. Uh-huh. You do. Any other traditions that your family had or anything crazy you read it's, like that? No, I mean, it's not even my family, but I also do want to say though, um, thank you to the person for the overnight sleep stuff for the cloth diaper advice. Oh, good. I went and got them and that was huge. So it worked. Which ones did you get? Charlie something. Charlie, uh, Charlie banana. Yes. 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 Queen. I love those. (laughs) Those are good ones. So yes. All right. This is the worst time because we started at one. That means I have to leave to go get my kids. Oh, sorry. Okay. Next time we'll start earlier if you're okay with that. Yes. I'll be at work. Yeah, those pesky kids, they got to be picked up every single day. I got to go. So yeah, I'm going to go get the monkeys. And then tonight is Twiniversity class. I'll be thinking of you. And I'm going to pick on whatever family was sitting in your seat oh. when you were there. I'm going to be like, that's Chelsea's seat. Oh. That's that. But you're due for a visit. Yes, so, I know. I, I want to meet. Let me know when you could come in. Let me know when you were going back to work and then I'll come and have lunch with you in Macy. I have a ton of stuff for you too. I've been hoarding things for you. Oh, so get, get ready. Listen, you're doing our world a giant favor. The least thing I could do is turn into a semi hoarder <laughs> and uh, have stuff for the puppies. Too All right. Sweet. I love you, girl. You I will too. talk to you later. If you need anything, just call me, text me or whatever. Thanks, Nat. We'll see Good you later. Good luck with the eggs. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Bye.